What is up guys? Welcome back for another one. I got a lot to talk about, so stay tuned here. Bear with me. So today's goal is to get, um, so I have a stuck bolt or a strip bolt head and my, this cover right here, this black cover down in the corner is leaking oil. Um, and one of these, you can see this T28, I think, the one that's right here, you can't really see it on camera. Um, the distance here is not even two fingers. That one, the head is stripped. And to replace the seal on this cover, you have to take off the two uh, cam sensors or whatever they are. And I can't do it because the head's stripped. So we're going to go up to James's shop, NHF Motorsports in Portales. We're going to go up there today. Hopefully, he can just weld. I, I grabbed a couple like old shitty bits. Hopefully I can just like hold a bit there while he like tack welds it real quick and then we'll put a wrench on it, spin it off, throw the new bolt in and I'll come home, uh, take everything that needs to be taken off and then replace that. But uh, you guys are probably seeing this Thursday or Friday. So tomorrow basically uh, we're leaving Friday morning early as shit. We're going to Denver streetcar takeover. If you guys live in that area or something, hit me up on Instagram, BR32YCE. We're going to be up here all weekend. Um, Doing a bunch of stuff. There should be a big meet and uh, dino stuff going on Friday night, and then the event Saturday, and then of course all the the racing on the street to follow Friday night and Saturday night. Uh, it's going to be intense. We go up here every year. Well, this will be our like third annual or second annual bro trip, I guess you could call it. Um, Denver's a shit, but also getting the United Motorsports Haldex tune tomorrow. Um, I mean, today is, today is actually Saturday, but Monday I'm going to call up to Blue Water, schedule me in for Friday afternoon. We need to get up there quick because they don't do tunes after like 3.30 or so, so we got to fly up there. But uh, hopefully getting that done. And then I ran into a guy online parting out his car. Um, he's got an Audi aluminum subframe, uh, white line, control arms, some type of dog bone insert that's upgraded better than stock. So there's that, and then uh, 034 trailing arms for the rear with their bushings in it. And I'm going to be pay picking up all that. He needs some stock parts, so I'm sending my stock intake, springs, trailing arms, and uh, of course cash on top and get all of that. Uh, that should probably be here the next week, week and a half, and then, uh, I don't know, whenever this turbo decides to sell, I'll be able to snag the, the big brake kit. So there's a lot of things coming up. There's still a lot of racing to do this season. So uh, every weekend up until the 3rd of August, I have things to do um, every weekend. So it's intense. I'm excited. The car is doing great. The four bar sensors are finally 100%. The car has never been smoother. It's, it's kind of ridiculous how smooth it feels. Knock on wall, but yeah, all right. I got a half hour drive up to James' shop. Fingers crossed that we can get this pulled out. There's the man. Look at that beard. Oh shit. Is it grabbing? Oh boy. Now here's the real fucking problem. Yep. All the clearance. Sorry. <laughs> well you can't see it uh, because it's not there. James just got it out with an easy out and his fucking hands. What a man. I don't know where it's at. I don't really care. It fell down there somewhere. I see it. I think that's it. Yeah. Boom. This bitch to focus. Yeah, you can see this thing was like 100% totally rounded out. And they're aluminum, so they're super soft and not magnetic. But uh, now it's out. I can replace it, go home, and pull this whole thing off and replace all the seals. Well, shout out to James again for getting that out. Uh, thankfully, you didn't have to like weld anything to it or anything crazy. I'm gonna get my set myself a set of those stubby easy outs. Um, I would have been able to do this a while ago. I've had this leak for a very long time. I just haven't had the time or 
willing to put the effort into trying to um, have somebody else remove that bolt. I did try last week to get it out, had no luck. And like with having this turbo in, and I don't, I don't want a leak at all. So um, I'm gonna let the car cool off for a while. Then we'll clear out the little, that little area there and start pulling it apart. It ain't really that bad. There's three of those aluminum screws, and then only like five or six regular hardware, and then that cover pops off. Pull the seal out, clean it off real good, clean the surfaces. I have two cam cover seals and the, the one big seal for that, that whole cover. Um, the hardest part is that bottom corner where it's leaking, like to try and get the seal sitting on there just right. I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. I actually have a full video on this from like forever ago. I did it with my iPhone at the time. So I'm kinda gonna go over this again. It's not that hard of a job. You have like eight or so of these screws going around holding the cover in and then you just have three uh, T30s on each cam sensor and then it just pulls right out. The only other thing you got, there is a, it's kind of hard to see, right in front of the tip of my finger, there's a little screw that holds the dipstick, and you're going to have to do that because to get to the bolt, it's kind of down beside it, the dipstick will be in the way. So I'm going to do all that, I'm going to kind of move the cooling stuff out of the way, I'm going to disconnect this hose, this hose, pull those up out of the way, pull the catch can out of the way so I can get to the screw for the dipstick, and uh... Just go from there. I think they're all T30, uh, except for, you know, if you got your catch can or whatever else you may have to move to facilitate your maintenance, but it's a pretty straightforward thing. It's pretty cool. Once you get in there, you can, you can see your cams and the uh, timing chains and your guides and stuff. So we'll go over that once I get there. I'll set the camera up, do a little time lapse, and uh, yeah, we'll get to work. The pain in the ass of the war today goes to this guy. This is the front most lower bolt. And the same, there's a matching one on the back side. Sorry, to, eh, there you go. This one's a lot easier because you can go through, you know, the back here by your downpipe and use your fingers. But this, you're going through, this one you're going through, you got a, a hand going through here to get one side of the screw and another one going through the top up here and then trying to screw it out because you can't get anything on the head of it. The clearance there is is very very tight, so you can break them all loose with a 10 mil, and then uh, either use your T30 or your fingers to get them out the rest of the way. Now I'm gonna do the cam ones, the three cam ones, real quick, and then uh, pop this this whole panel off. Three most important tools for getting this cover off, four millimeter Allen, 10 millimeter Crescent, and a the shortest, stubbiest T30 you can find. This T30 you're gonna want to use to at least break everything loose and you can use your four mil to get everything out the rest of the way. This is kinda, I chopped the back of it off because you need the clearance, but sometimes you can't even get your finger on the back of it to keep this from not spinning both directions, so. I mean, this is definitely needed though. You need something that's of the proper size to break those loose because these are all, they're aluminum. And I'm pretty sure the way the cam sensors work, they're magnets. So these are aluminum. Aluminum isn't magnetic and aluminum is super soft. So you will round the shit out of these and uh, you have to do what I've seen earlier or what you've seen earlier. So now we're about to actually take the cover off. I don't actually remember if you have to take I think you do. I think you pop these these cam boys out first and then the cover itself. And they're in there pretty good. Boom. There we are. This is what uh, this is what you're looking at. Probably very expensive. Make sure you keep them organized so you know what side goes where, of course and uh, out of the environment. So I'm gonna go sit this in a drawer. Woo, about dropped it. Oh my God. All right, the other one looks 
exactly the same. I'm sure they are exactly the same, but might as well put them in the way that they came out. Definitely clean them up. That's, that's what you're looking at. I don't think you even actually have to take the oil cap off, but I took the oil cap off. On this side, you have your dipstick in the way. Um, that's pretty much it, I think. Should be able to walk it out. Get stuck on your dipstick, get stuck on the cams. You can see why this is a pain in the ass to get in there properly, because of all that. So, mine looks like butt because I had put extra sealant on it and stuff. I don't know. Don't look at it. It's bad. Bad, bad. Starting to get a little dark out, but here's the cover all nice and cleaned up. Took a bunch of uh, brake cleaner to it, some wire brushes. It's sitting all nice. Now I'm about to clean the surfaces over here. Get you guys a closer look on uh, what we're playing with. That bottom area down there, this corner is what was leaking real bad. Um, you see there's a little bit of sealant and stuff on here, so I'm going to go off. You can see all the dirt up top. Go around and clean this baby up real nice. Um, yeah, you guys probably can't see it on camera, but down in there, no, you can't see it all. You can see the camshafts, like the actual lobes, but yeah, this is what we're dealing with. It's not that bad of a job. Of course, you know, I'm, I'm extra, so I'm inspecting everything. I'm cleaning every surface. All that jazz, but yeah, that's what she looks like under the cover. Okay, Google, pause music. Okay, so each one of your screws for this timing cover, they have they have a gasket and then they have this retainer. It's gonna pop through the gasket and it holds itself in there like so, like this, like it, the retainer, and then there's a gasket on this side, so. Set this down, kind of just pop her on through, boom, and then I stay. I like keep pressure on the bottom and kind of wiggle the top while I'm pushing the gasket down. Make sure it like fully comes through the gasket. Make sure no no oil is gonna get through and and leak. And then of course just push the shit out of this gasket. It's gonna be a pain in the butt to get back in the car, but uh, man, my fingers are crossed hard. I do not want to ever deal with this again. Ever, ever, ever. You know how well the video will show here, but this, this cam sensor seal is, it's tapered. And you can see on here, it's also tapered. So these seals only go on one way. If you try and have them backwards, they're not going to really go on. And it's going to want to stretch. So make sure you're paying attention and kind of see how it tapers. So it goes big to small, small being on the most outside. Boom. All right, I got everything in there nice and torqued out. I still need to do the, the cam covers. Uh, don't over torque those at all. Like I said, they're aluminum. They will strip easily and they don't require much. There's already a seal on it. You're literally just holding the sensor on to the cam, whatever they want to call it. But when you're tightening uh, the cover down, you'll want to do like a cross pattern, like you're doing your wheels. So start at like the corner and hop over here and hop down there and then go up and then down and then over here and then just keep doing that until it's snug and then torque them all down. I don't have a torque spec for you, but I can tell you they will hold a lot of strength. I just torqued these down to like the extreme. So hopefully never, ever, 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 ever do this again. Let's hope. All right. Make sure, like I said, do not over tighten those guys. They're aluminum. I'm going to tell you a thousand times. It's very important. Otherwise you're going to have a bad time. So get those all in, hand tighten them down and then go around, tighten them in a circle. Do not forget your bolt for your dipstick and make sure it pops back in the, to the cover here. Um, nice and stable. Now if you got a catch cam, put your catch cam back in. Uh, make sure you reconnect your cam connectors. Uh, if you undid anything over here, make sure you, you know, make sure everything's nice. I'm about to empty my catch can real quick. Throw that back in. 
and go for a nice lap around town. Hopefully this won't leak. I cleaned up everything pretty decently. I'm going to spray some more uh, brake cleaner down there, get a brush. That way I can keep a, a good clean base. That way I can tell if it does start to leak again. Well, that's about all I got for this video. Until homie sends me pictures of all that suspension stuff that's coming. Uh, I got like, you know, five days, so I edit this. So I'll let you guys know how um, this holds up. It went in a lot easier than it did last time. I don't know what I was doing. Uh, like I said, I had people here. I was distracted, but it went in a lot smoother. I felt the seal before I, I you know, actually put it up against the block. Uh, like I said, torque everything down in a circle. Uh, the, the actual cam sensors themselves. Be delicate with those if you ever, even after this job. Hopefully you shouldn't ever. I don't even know why. Whatever. But it happened. It's fixed again twice. I guess it's fixed once if it is permanently. Whatever. There's so many bugs. Anyway, I'll let you guys know later in the week. Hopefully got some pictures of the stuff. I'm really excited to get some, some caster, a little bit of more camber up front. I get us a realignment. Get us a freaking lightweight battery. Get freaking, what's it called? Corner balanced. Ugh. So many things, so many things, and my list is still growing. So every day I find things I want to do and want to buy and research, research, research. All right, I'll talk to you guys later in the week. What is up, guys? It is now Tuesday, so at this point, everything you're seeing is after um, Monday's video at Autocross, and obviously everything before that point was before Autocross, so doing the seal and stuff, that was all before Autocross. Um, there's still an oil leak, but it is not from this. There, I need to take, now that the car's cold, I'm gonna take my phone and get back there with the camera and try and look, but it looks like it's it's coming kind of from where uh, the back and the side of the head meet, which is where this, uh, this cover is, but it's more like behind the car. It's not leaking much, and you can't really see <laughs> like on this metal bracket, not the one at our height, but the lower. That over there, there's a little bit of oil and you can feel some on the back of the head. Maybe it's just residual. I'm not sure. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not, but I'm not 100%. But it's it's a little dirty back there. You can see that this is it's kind of like wet with oil. It's not coming from the oil drain or anything back there. Right there, you can see the oil drain uh, for the turbo. I don't know. I think it might be somewhere between the head and the the block. I'm not sure. If you guys ever experience this, let me know. It's not like a crazy leak. It's just like a couple drips here and there. Like between going down to Roswell, racing, coming back, and then going to work and back the past couple days, my oil level hasn't changed. Like it's not like a significant um, leak, but it is there and it's annoying. So there's that. Um, also, so since you see an audit course video I don't really have reversed reversed second fourth or sixth so I overnighted the clips I need for the shifter bracket it has nothing to do with the short shifter I think a lot of people were confused in the last video because I thought it was a short shifter I thought like the threads had pulled out of it it's not it has nothing to do with the short shifter it's just a clip um, decided to, to leave it, it left I guess because of vibrations or shifting hard something along those lines the clip for the shifter bracket that holds the cable, um, you know, it's gone. So, you know, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. But basically, going backwards to any gear, so two, four, six, and reverse is kind of, I don't know why reverse is being done. And basically, all those gears you pull back, and there's nothing to hold this cable from, from moving its entirety whenever you pull back. So that's why those gears aren't there. When you're going forward, it's pushing the cable through the bracket and you know that at that point, the, the clip that needs to be there, it, it doesn't need to do anything when you're going to the forward gears. So I'm about to pull the intake. I got uh, four clips. Some guy named Mike, Mike Banks from your auto supply or some company that like YPS, your parts supply. That's what it's called. They're out of Virginia. So shout out to him. He sent me four of the clips that I need. Overnighted them babies. So um, I'm going to install one of these and I'll have three extra. Probably keep one in my toolbox or two in the toolbox just in case for uh, long trips. And then also we got a new intake manifold. It's already on the car. I did it yesterday real quick. 
Uh, there was no need to record. This is like some of the extras. I got an extra fuel rail, four injectors, uh, this piece for the intake manifold, this small wiring harness. I don't, I mean, I would sell it. I think the guy's name is Emil, I believe. Sorry, buddy, I, I'm bad with pronunciation. E-M-I-L, he's from Sweden, awesome guy. I didn't even realize he was sending me all the extras with the intake manifold, uh, but he did. And also, with that manifold came injector clips, and I wound up using those clips because I, di I didn't have any with the Precision Raceworks kit, and that makes my life so much easier. Uh, you put the injectors into the fuel rail, put the fuel the injector clips in, and then from there you just shove it in. It pops right down in. Put your bolts in. I torqued them down to hell and back. I mean, I've driven probably 30 miles since I installed the Euro manifold with my stuff and I haven't had an issue. So if you guys are gonna be upgrading to um, an MPI kit of any sort and you don't wanna deal with you know, trying to melt nuts or it's definitely grab an intake, uh, Euro, Euro intake manifold, uh, you can go to the, the UK eBay and find a bunch on there. If I remember, I'll put the part number down in the description, that way you can use that to reference for if you do ever go that route. All right. Sorry, that's five minutes of me ranting there. I wanted to catch you guys up on what's been going on. Um, oil leak is still kind of there, but not really. Euro manifold is in, plus new injector clips. And now I got the clips for the shifter stuff. I'm gonna go do that, make sure everything is Gucci. And I'm gonna run to Walmart, grab oil, and some other things. I gotta do a tire rotation and oil change before we head out to Denver Friday morning for streetcar takeover. Friday morning. I, I slept past my alarm today, so I, I didn't get a chance to call Blue Water, but I need to call Blue Water tomorrow, try and get in Friday morning to get the United Motorsports Haldex tune. Um, that's all I got. So I'm going to go pull this and take, put this shit in. So this is what we're dealing with here. You see on the left, there is not a clip. On the right, you can see that clip back there. This clip up and left, and you can kind of see this isn't sitting right. You got space sitting, so I, I got to do pull this forward and it gets to like a thicker rubber piece that's actually like hard attached to this line and then I'll stick the clip through and then go row some gears everything should be fine and dandy I just I don't understand how that even happened but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put it in there and then try and rotate it to the left here so it's like up against this wall and hopefully it'll never eject itself ever again but if uh, you guys are ever racing and you have a manual car and something similar happens definitely check these clips I highly doubt it's ever going to happen to anybody, but obviously it's possible. And if I hear one of you guys say, you should have went DSG, um, for golf. <laughs> Alright, well, everything's back in order. Threw that clip in. Everything's great. Got all my gears again. I'm a very happy camper. Don't mind me with my shirt off. It's like 100 degrees. Now I'm going to rotate tires, turn up my dampening, do an old change. I'm not going to bore you guys with any of that. But uh, thanks for watching this far. Uh, Monday and Thursday's videos should be off the chain. I said Friday night, the Dino Ecletus and Boosted Boys and 1320, all those guys up in Denver. Also probably getting the Haldex tune Friday and all the racing going on Saturday and Saturday night. It's gonna be insane. So be on the lookout for that. I already uh, hooked up with some guys in Denver that I'm gonna meet up with, a bunch of MQB dudes. Um, thinking of one car, I might actually do a special one because he's got a blue RDSG, I think a Boss 600 kit on it, uh, E85, uh, MPI, all that. So we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be a freaking super lit weekend, and I'm so excited. Car's great. I think tomorrow we're going to start working on launch control for the car. Um, turn up the boost quite a bit because it's not where it needs to be. But yeah, stay tuned. Videos coming next week are going to be sick. And I appreciate you guys watching all my videos. All my videos have been getting like a thousand views now. It's a couple weeks ago, I was like, it was great to make 300. Now everything's like hitting a thousand or more. It's it's pretty crazy. It's I'm very happy the way the channel's going. Um, yeah. Anyway, just tune in for the next one. You got any questions? Uh, ask in the comments or whatever, or hit me up on Instagram, br32yce. I talk to people all day, every day. My inbox is popping all the time. And I work night shifts, so I don't answer you right away. I'm probably sleeping. But, all right. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the flip-flop.